851, turn right, heading 180. Hey everyone, welcome to DJ's Aviation. The Boeing 747 CMCA. Yes, you've heard me right. I wasn't done. Last week I published a video on the 747-400 XQLR, and obviously a lot of people were like, what else have they been studying over the past few decades? After some digging, I found the 747 CMCA, which I'm unsure in regards of names if it does top the XQLR. However, its intended purpose is extremely interesting to me and worthy of a video. Let's discuss the aircraft itself. The plan was to use the very popular 747 and turn it into a 747 Cruise Missile Carrying Truck, or CMCA for short. The bottom deck was set to hold the missiles, and Boeing would work around the loading and unloading through opening up the nose, like what is seen on the 747 freighters. Boeing would have then proceeded to use a conveyor belt-like device to load all the missiles onto the aircraft, and obviously unload them if necessary. What were the plans for the top deck though? Boeing eyed this top deck as being a communication zone, with full control over the operations and launches, and also communications to the ground or even to the air to coordinate particular launches. The aircraft was considered for proposal in the mid-1970s when the B-1 bomber was being developed. Boeing believed that they could use the 747, which was a hit at the time, as a testbed for this variant and others alike. Boeing attempted to pounce on the popularity of the aircraft to sketch up as many aircraft as they could possibly think of. This is how all the different variants I've discussed in my unreleased aircraft series came about. What were going to be the benefits to launching this type of aircraft though? The Boeing 747 offers a better range, added space for the missiles, and in turn has a better payload than so many of the other aircraft that were on the market then and even today. In turn, Boeing believed that this 747 CMCA could have been a far more attractive option to those looking for a missile carrying aircraft. The Air Force were considering the proposal from Boeing, however nothing eventuated. Another idea that was proposed in regards to utilising the 747 CMCA was having the likes of the F-22 and other fighter jets which have pace to scout forward and then communicate with the 747 to coordinate attacks. As the 747 isn't as acrobatic as the F-22 and others alike, it would make sense to utilise these to try and scout. If the launch was a considerably large one, the 747 CMCA would be the ideal choice of aircraft due to its larger capacity, in turn being able to carry more missiles. Problems with the aircraft have actually been discussed in many forums, with some users outlining how the aircraft would have involved far too many weapons being placed on the one delivery system, in turn making it difficult to move rapidly. For instance, if an evasive maneuver needed to be put into action, it wouldn't really work too well. Essentially, and more importantly though, this particular aircraft would allow those who needed it to execute attacks that would really hurt their opponents in a short period of time. But why was it cancelled and why did we never see it? The main reason was that it became evident that the 747 hadn't really been made to do this sort of thing, and Boeing believed that the future lied in more conventional bombers that we see today. That's going to conclude the explanation of the 747 CMCA. What are your thoughts on it though? Do you believe it should have been released? Or do you agree with Boeing in regards to opting with a more conventional bomber for the future? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, I'd like to thank you very much for watching this video of mine. If you have any other aircraft that you would like me to cover in this unreleased aircraft series, don't hesitate to drop them in the comment section below. I do look forward to you all joining me in the next one. Race all of these broken dreams and flight And we'll fly